Yo, what do you do, guys? It is your boy, Leo Mookie here, back with you with another new chapter of Gu- Gundam Seed Soldier. And it's good to be back with this, another chapter for this. Honestly, I'm giving you guys a heads up now for this chapter. It's not going to be a long chapter, to be honest. Just going to be a fully, well, dive into chapter until that of the Waltfield Company, the White Fangs, and the Archangel team with the Desert Dawn helping out, and even that of Guy and his and his Blue Astray. So, yeah. Sorry for the, sorry. It's it's gonna have to be for wait. But even so, I just need to finish the finish some things up a little bit. So sorry for the short chapter. Sorry for the invincible cliffhanger as well. So let's go through that of a quick recap. In the last part, things have begun to change quite a bit. Some things from canon stay the same, while some are not, proving even more that Aaron is in that of an AU universe instead of the canon seed universe instead. Back on the Archangel, Sai did like he did before, tried to steal tried to steal and pilot that of the strike to prove that he's better than well Aaron. But realizing that the controls were not made for somebody like him, he basically failed until Aleluya and Akihiko and the Strife and Loveless basically stopped him and ba- and where he would be punished. With that of Kira, Kigali, and Aaron, on the other hand, they did their shopping for that of the crew. With, however, the tension between that of Aaron and Kira is pretty damn high, to be honest. And it's annoying as hell. Until getting into the same plot as before with that of Andrew Waltfeld. And as he used himself as bait to take on that of the Blue Cosmos terrorists that are trying to kill him. Bringing them back to their mansion. And so he can basically understand those he's going to be fighting against in the future. It it goes just like they would in canon. The only difference is that Commander Shiro Izuyoi, the White Fox, is there too. And as they have the same conversation as they would in canon about the reason why they fight. Why they continue piloting a gun to their mobile suits and everything. But with Eren there... He gives them that of a rough draft on how this war would end, how it's most likely to end, and the reason on why Avalanche was created to end the war by any to make sure that no that there be no genocidal wet genocide on on both sides at all. So, with enough said, let's get into this, shall we, guys? Chapter ten: The Calm Before the Storm. While the conversation at that of Walfeld's estate is going on currently in the city, especially in that of shadier locations of that of the Zaf controlled territory lies that of a massive underground warehouse with that of multiple crates and also many of well, many other well shipping containers as well as these hold as currently right now, Natural, Guy and Kisuka are at the location on where they're supposed to get the supplies for the Archangel once they leave the Northern ter- the Northern African territories. So the location that they're at is basically the black market with Natural basically looking at the into- looking at this place as she couldn't help but narrow her eyes a bit thinking many of these I can tell that half of these supplies come from that of the Alliance. They basically has stole them or somebody has sold them to them. As she having that of a look of disgust and annoyance, within soon, Kisika was about to explain. Before then, guy saying, "You know, it's either it's either this or nothing. You need honest. You're in Zav controlled territory. You really think anybody's just going? You think they're just going to allow you to have this? After all, in the Desert Dawn, barely have any supplies as it is. So they come here for." So they come here to get the, the weapons and, well, vehicles that they need to take down, take on that of the Zaf forces here that occupy their territory. So it's either take it or leave it. With then, soon, Natural wanted to complain, but then she soon takes that of a deep breath, calm herself down before saying, I don't like it, but I'll accept it. Regular... Rules and regulations do not matter when it comes to that of the battlefield, after all. With then, 
Kisuka couldn't help but be completely caught off guard. He would expect that this one, that a woman like this would be stubborn to her principles as, a, as that of a militaristic woman. As Kisuka, who has been that of a colonel for that of Orb for so long, is aware of the Badgero family, a well-known and well-respected family in that of the in that the Atlantic Federation, and but however, they've always been a stickler for the rules and loyal to that of the military chain of command and code of conduct as well. But seeing that she was a, she's starting to be a little bit more flexible catches that of Kisika off guard. But then even Guy couldn't help but adjust his sunglasses before then saying, huh, I would expect you to be a lot more, well, resistant about this, and Lieutenant. As Natural looks at the mercenary coordinator, within, she's saying, the old me would have. To be honest, regulations and laws need to be followed, especially during the chain of command and taking care of certain and when operations are conducted. However, within, she began to think of Aaron, thinking about the actions that he's been taking, that they've actually helped him out, that has actually protected the crew and also that of her comrades as well. And even though she knows that he's a quite secretive person for, for that of a, well, 18 year old, she can tell that he generally does care about the crew of the Archangel. Realizing that she may need to be more flexible when it comes to regulations and not let her family pride get in the way as she answers back saying, that's because I need to think things through and think more about the well-being of the crew instead of procedures and code of conduct after all. Hearing this from the raven-haired young woman, the two men couldn't help but have that of a, well, sympathetic smile. But then Kiska saying, shows that you're quite a you're quite the mature woman to realize this. Serving one's country and nation is a good thing, and the and the great qualities of that of a soldier. However, if you become too blinded by your idea by the, your duties as a soldier, instead of looking things at the bigger picture, it will blind you to the truth of how the, how everything works. After all, within soon. Guy can up and say, agreed. If I'm going to be honest, lady, originally when I heard that you were a badger, I was kind of afraid that you would be a lot more prejudiced when it came to coordinators. But given that kid, given that coordinator kid who's piloting the strike and that kid that looks like a coordinator, but isn't a coordinator, that mercenary kid. Well, he calls himself Ace, right? With then, Nadaro saying, yes, that's true. With soon, Kiska saying, Still can't believe that a mercenary company was able to create their own mobile suit that's supposed to rival the current high generation mobile suits. Those, well, weapons developed by the Atlantic, Fe by the Atlantic Federation and Morgenreed. Not only that, hearing that it has so much more power as well, within Nadro saying, you have no idea. The Loveless alone is quite powerful. We've seen it, what it's capable to do in space, but, the strife. I don't know why, but within thinking about the black mobile suit Gundam, as she couldn't help but say, it some I don't know why, but just looking at it kind of terrifies me. With the two looking at the lieutenant, within Kiska saying, I've seen it too. It's not that it's not a, well, terrifying mobile suit. It's just that it feels like it, it's giving off that of a pressure. A pressure saying that it is not something to be trifled with. Within, Guy saying, so I'm not the only one being crazy. I thought the same thing about that thing when I came on to your ship. And I've seen the Loveless seems something else. But then that black, but then that strife. I've seen what it's, what, what the pilot's able to do the first time that they fought. It almost feels like the two were basically becoming one within. Nada remembering the words that it, that Aaron said about him piloting the strife that he's able to become one with it due to a special system within it. As she wanted to say it, but decided to keep it to herself, wanting to at least keep some of, well, Aaron's secrets about his mobile suits to themselves, showing another form of wanting to trust him after all. 
with then soon I met one of the workers at the black market came up and say all right that's all of them we'll be shipping all of these containers to your ship in no time just give us at least that of a good few hours or so especially since we need to make sure that Zeph doesn't find out about our little excursion to your ship with then hearing that Natter was saying we thank you for your for what you've done with then Kiska saying a pleasure doing business with you, sir. Saying, hey, good money is good money. Doesn't matter if it's the Alliance, Zaft, or even that of the, or even that of the Re rebel forces. I'm always willing to do business. As the man walks away, within Guy saying, <laughs> he may act like he's all about the money, but that's not the case. He's just as much of a resident here in the North Territories as anyone else. He just wants to make sure that these lands are free from Zaf control, from Zaf occupation. That's it. All right, let's get going. We gotta get, let's head back to Tassel and then we need to prepare for what's to come in coming days. Within, all, four, all three adults leave. Currently back at the Archangel, Narumi taking a break. Real, still can't believe annoyed at the fact about what Sai had did about a little while ago trying to basically pilot the strike with then entering into that of her quarter into that of her office quarters being moo as he brings in that of two cups of coffee again saying uh ah, talk about one eventful afternoon am i right with then narumi couldn't help but look at the blonde haired command lieutenant commander with then she couldn't help but sigh saying what was that boy thinking trying to pilot the strike. Did he not know that the strike was was calibrated and o OS system is made for Kira? No natural was able to pilot that thing right now. With then, soon, Moo couldn't help but sit down in front of the desk with then saying, I think I might understand what's going on. Him and Kira's friends, the ones from Heliopolis, turns out they, turns out Sai is having a bit of a, well, one-sided rivalry with that of our mercenary companion, Ace, actually. With Narumi raising an eyebrow saying, what do you mean? As Mu basically lays down the issues on what's going on, as turns out since Flay has been basically spending a lot of time with that of Aaron, and she's been even to the point that they've been sleep sleeping in the exact same room as well, there is even that of the there's even been moments where she's been, well, defending each and every one of his actions, after all. And not only that, when she's not doing her duties on the bridge, she's always clinging right next to him. But then, Moob finishes up saying, and the last time I checked, wasn't, wasn't Cadet Ouster also uh, Cadet Argyle's, well, fiance? With then, hearing this, Narumi couldn't help but sigh before realizing we're just in the middle of a teenage drama love triangle, aren't we? With then, soon, Mu couldn't help but take a sip of his coffee before then saying, yep, this is what happens when we prescri prescript teenagers into that of a war. Uh, honestly, I'm more surprised that this is happening. I even hear that Kira's been supporting his friend, which is a good thing. However, with then, soon, no. Narumi can help but look at Moo saying he's it's just causing more friction between them. Sooner up but then Moo will say, yeah. And if we go into another battle and those two still hate each other, who knows what's going to happen. Those two may basically come to that of come to that of blows, or even possibly one of them might kill each other on pure accident, mainly through that of mere emotion and anger alone. With then hearing this, Narumi couldn't help but lower her head, thinking, ah, personally, I'm really hoping that that doesn't come to, that it's not come to that. Kira has done so much for us since what happened at Heliopolis. With his home being destroyed, forced to pilot a mobile suit because he's the only one that can, forced to fight his own kind over and over and over again. Don't even get me started what happened at Artemis and with that of Miss with that of Miss Klein as well. Within, 
Moo can help Bud scratch the back of his head saying, tell me about it. I mean, kid doesn't, kid doesn't need to be forced into a war. The guy should focus more on basically trying to find a girlfriend or just look to the best of his life. Not basically be forced into a war, but now that I think about it, he seems to be taking things a lot more seriously lately. Almost like he's trying to push himself. Within soon, Narumi saying, "You really, you think he's trying to do it to improve, to basically prove that he's better than that of Ace?" Within Mu saying, "Well, there was this thing about Kira. From, I heard from that of Tola and Moralia saying that Kira may have a crush on that of Flay." Within soon, Narumi couldn't help but basically slam her head on that of the table. As she couldn't help but feel somewhat, I really, I think we really are trapped in a teenage drama nowadays. <laughs> With then, Moo couldn't help but want to, want to laugh, but realizing the situation, saying, possibly so. As he takes another sip, but then saying, speaking of our mercenary friend, how do you think that's, how, you, how are you taking him being part of the crew? You did say he's a good addition and you do care about him, but... What, but what about the secrets that he may have? The secrets about the Alliance, especially the fact that most likely the benefactor of the, of the Alliance is run by that of former a head admiral, Re Twesty, after all, within raising her head before then, soon take, taking a sip of her coffee as well, answering Moo saying, there's a high chance of that. I mean, a mil... A mercenary company that has quite a bit of money to basically develop their own mobile suits that's supposed that's suppo supposedly on the same level or possibly even surpasses the G Weapon project that we were working on for basically months now. The Loveless was was so destructive and powerful when we saw it in space, and then there's this strife. A mobile suit that we, that we saw was able to move so fluently and so correct. And so perfectly that it almost like it was like a human, like it was a human itself. I've never seen a mobile suit able to move s s such as that. But then, got, Moo couldn't help but nod saying, yeah. And when, every time when I'm in the hangar and I see that mobile suit, it just gives me the heebie-jeebies. Wondering on how a kid like that is even able to pilot a monster such as that. And honestly, I, I'm worried about him. With then, Narumi saying, you're worried? Wor worried that we may be pushing him too far. That we may be distrusting him so much to the, to the point that he may switch sides. I mean, you already saw on how much he respects that of the Desert Tiger after all. He shows that he basically admires the man. And possibly because of the, of the coordinators have a once with his squad after all. With... I haven't heard I haven't heard him say one nice thing about that of the about the alliance, especially when it came to the only person that he seemed like he could that he said good things about was that of the rear admiral, and that was it. So then again, I don't see, I think that the guy I think the guy has a low opinion of both sides, to be honest. And personally, I can't blame him. But even so, I've seen his actions. We may not trust. They may be shady and skeptic, but to be fair, Kid's done a lot to help us out through thick and thin, especially when it came to taking down many of the Zaf forces in our way. He's done so much. I trust the Kid. I think it's about time that everybody else does as well. What do you say, Captain? As Moo gives off that of his trademark smile, but then Narumi couldn't help but feel to blush a bit before then, taking a sigh as she gives off that of a smile, saying, Maybe you're right. Once the next time we see him, I think it's the best time that we get that I apologize for my actions as well. But, but then she's saying, However, I want, to at le I want him to at least be honest with us from time to time. To be honest, I really feel like because I know for a fact that he is lying about the whole amnesia thing after all. With then, soon... Moo saying, wait, so that's the main reason you've been angry about him for? With then, soon, 
Narumi couldn't help but say, and you're not? With then, soon, Moo couldn't help but scratch the back of his head saying, Honestly, I kind of seen this more of a guy thing, to be honest. Especially for a kid his age. Bossy wanted a cool nickname to be go to go by, to be honest. If he didn't want to give out his real name, I knew he didn't want to give out his real name. So I figured Ace was just a cover for that. Not because, not just because he didn't trust us, but mainly because I think he's just one of those kids that just didn't have that didn't have a cool name growing up. After all. I mean, take me for example. I used to despise my name, even though it was it was a name that was given to me by that of my mother. Let's just say when you have when you have that of a Japanese mother, from that of the Eurasian Federation, and a father like mine who comes from that of the Atlantic Federation, you get a little bit of stares after all. With then, soon Narumi can help but sigh, saying. Ah, <sighs> boys will be boys, I guess. Within, Moo couldn't help but sip his coffee again, saying, You know it. As the two higher-ups of the Archangel crew continue to sip their coffee and relax while they can. Within, down in that of the, bri in that of the brig, though, lies that of Sai, sitting on the floor with his head, with that of, with his hands wrapped around his arm legs and his head in his knees as then soon Moralia and Toll alongside that of Cuzzy basically walks in comes into the brig within Moralia having that of Sai's lunch saying here you go Sai we were able to bring this to you within Sai not answering but then Toll is saying I can't believe you dude you really tried to pilot the strike I mean, kudos on you for trying, dude. I will give you that, but with then soon, before Tola could finish, Smeralia basically elbows her boyfriend. With then soon, because he's saying, to be on honestly, Sai, tell me, was all of this because of, well, Mr. Ace by any chance? Hearing that, everybody looking at the indigo, well, plain looking boy, as he gets a little nervous, saying, well, I mean, it's just a hunch, that's all. I mean, with then, soon. Sai's so saying, do you guys have any idea how annoying it is? But then, as Sai basically looks up, as it looks like he's been crying a bit, actually, with his eyes being quite red under that of his orange glasses, saying, to feel like the person that you basically care about deeply doesn't even look at you the way that she used to. That she looks at somebody else. Somebody else that's barely even been around. And just because he does one great thing, one good deed, that she doesn't even look at me anymore. Doesn't even see me as me anymore. You have any idea how frustrating that is? Wh can you guys? With then hearing this, all of them couldn't help but look at each other. But then, Moralia basically still looking at Sai, saying, Sai, I understand how you feel. I can empathize. But, to be honest, did you really think Flay really loved you like that? But then, Sai confused at Moralia's words. But then, Moralia continued saying, I've been with Flay. Flay's one of my closest friends. At first, he always did seem like your typical high society rich girl from Earth, especially the Atlantic Federation, given who her father was. She basically hits all of those stereotypes, and yet I was still her friend. She did talk about you, Sai, and I mean, she did a lot. But it was always in a way of out of respect and out of fondness, but not out of love. She told me that she only cared deeply about you because you were both basically in that of an arranged marriage after all, fixed up by both your parents. She only went along with it because she didn't want to disappoint her father after all. And she does care deeply about you, it's just that she doesn't love you. And I believe that she's the one that needs to tell you this herself. All I'm doing is just giving you at least what you need to be prepared for. With then, the the brunette haired girl basically lit, stands back up before walking off as Tola basically walking after his girlfriend 
as Cuzzy looking somewhat down as well before falling after his friends. With then Sai saying, damn it, damn it. With the, as they leave, however, the door opens up again. Within soon, so, Flay, somebody walks up saying, Sai, as it being a familiar voice, being Flay. Within, Sai saying, Flay, I, within, soon she basically raises her hand saying, Sai, I need to tell you this now. Within saying, Moralia already said it. Saying, yeah, I walked past them. She said she already told you a bit. Within, Flay, Flay basically holding on to that of her left arm, to her left arm. Within, feeling a little bit down, before then saying, I think I should have said this so much sooner beforehand. With then saying, tell me, why do you love him? With then, soon, so Flay confused before realizing that. Why do you love somebody that you barely know? We've been, we've been around each other for so long. We, I've done everything I can to support you and care about you. I wanted this marriage between us to work. So why? But then, Flay saying, that's because I never really did love you, Sai. Don't get me wrong. You were, just as Moralia probably told you, you are precious to me. You're a great person. Somebody that I can rely on and think and think fondly of. But I never really loved you like you thought I did. At first, over the time and years, I thought I did. I thought I also, I thought I loved you too. But to be honest, I never really did love you. I think I was pretending that I loved you just to satisfy my father because I didn't want to make him feel, well, disappointed in me. I didn't want to cause him any troubles after all, everything he's done for me. He's the only family I got left after all. He's the one person who I, who I care so deeply about. Even when I knew, knew about his hatred for coordinators and he basically passed them on to me, I thought that he was right. But then, I re and then when I thought that I was about to lose him back in space, when I begged and hoped that Kira would protect him too, and yet he couldn't. He, he didn't. And, but then, Ace, Ace showed up. He showed up and protected my daddy. Protected my father, the one person I had left in this world. At first I was worried and scared that he was a coordinator after all, but then when I found out that he's actually a natural like us, I thought maybe everything that my dad said about those with that of hard work and talent, with true hard work and talent, that aren't, that isn't genetic was better. But then when he spoke up, when he talked about how he doesn't discriminate over both naturals coordinators, that he doesn't see any of them differently, that he just, that, that we're all just people, that genes doesn't make a person. It's a person's actions and ideals that make them who they are. When I realized that, when I realized the person that saved my dad didn't care that he was a natural coordinator, that he just did it because it was the right thing to do. I realized I have so I am so wrong. I have looked at this world so differently, even myself for so differently, that I should have been more honest with myself after all. And now I am being honest with myself. I love Mr. Ace because he basically told me that I can be myself without anyone else basically dictating or controlling me are making decisions for me, like my father, you, and everybody else around me. My decision was to follow him, was to be close to him. I wanted to know more about him. So I joined the Alliance because I wanted to stay by his side, because I wanted to know more about how much I could be myself and decide my own, my own fate. You show me that I'm more than just a pretty face and I'm glad. And not only that, he shows that he values me, not because of my body or my looks or my name or anything like that, but because he needed me when, he, when, er when everybody else was against him. Even you, Sai. I think we all forget that he may be this powerful, badass pilot that we all basically rely on 
and and see as somewhat of a rec reckless or some or somewhat secretive but he's just as much of a person as any of us he has moments of weakness and moments of feeling so down and depressed that it's just like anyone else he has moments where things get to him just as much where he has a boiling point a breaking point as well and i was there when i saw it i didn't see this person that basically saved saved my daddy and basically opened my eyes to the help on how the world should be. I saw a man who's basically, re who's reached his limit so much, and yet he's doing all of, and yet it still feels like he's basically forced against everybody else. And if everybody else is against him, then I'll stay by his side, always. I'll be there to pick him up when nobody else will. With then hearing that, Sai couldn't help but realize that she's uh, she's right that he's never really bothered getting to know Aaron never getting to know who the kind of person he really is all he saw was a guy that was that basically had Faye's affection the person that he loves affection he wasn't jealous of him because he could pilot a mobile suit he was jealous of him because he never really had he, he never had Faye's love to begin with and the worst part is, he knows that Kira has always had a crush on Flay too, as he just basically accepted it. Knowing that one of his closest friends may have had a crush on his fiance, he just allowed it to, just allowed his friend to fester with it. It wasn't causing any trouble, and yet now his now one of his friends is basically hating on, hating on a guy that has done nothing to them but protect them, all because he he won't let. He knows that Kira, who's way too kind-hearted and caring, is also too damn stubborn for his own good as well. Within, Sai couldn't help but wipe the, take off his glasses and wipe the tears from his eyes, saying, Flay, I'm sorry. Within, she's saying, I'm sorry too. Sorry for not being honest with you from the very beginning. And I would think I was just too scared myself. I still want us to be close, Sai. I still want us to be friends, just not romantically anymore. And as a sign of me still trusting you, I haven't told anybody else this, not even the captain, the lieutenant, or the commander. But once this mission is over, I plan on joining Mr. Ace and Avalanche. Within hearing that, saying, what? You, yeah, I do. I know it sounds crazy, but I feel like it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing I should do. So once this is over, I plan on doing that. I plan on taking discharge papers and leaving and leaving the Alliance and joining him. After all, as she walks away before looking back at Sai saying, he's the one person I want to be with more than anything. After saying her piece and Flay walking off, Sai couldn't help but lay his head back onto the wall onto that of the, well, cell, of the cell wall before saying, I never stood a chance to begin with, no matter what I did. I just caught myself in here for absolutely freaking nothing. But then, Sai so couldn't help but smile saying, I wish the best for you, Flay. Back at Walfeld's estate, with then, soon, hearing all of this, but then, Shiro speaking up saying, I believe you. Within, everybody saying, what? Within, Melanie saying, commander. Within saying, no, Melanie, he's right. I mean, look at, look at how this war is. So many, every time when we push back against the Alliance, they always do, they always come back even stronger or powerful, more aggressive than anything. And yet every time, and we lose more and more good people even though we have that of the technological advantage in this war, they have the numbers advantage. It's just how it is. The stamp, there's no truth. And sooner or later, we're going to destroy one another until there's nothing left. With then, Kira and Kigali couldn't help but be caught off guard. With then, even Aaron was wondering what, what she's going to continue saying. Before then, she was saying, but even so, I want to look up for the best of people. 
I want to hope that there's a chance that peace can still be achieved. A peace on where we can at least try to understand one another. As a half coordinator and half natural, I know what it's like. I know what I, I've seen the beauty that coordinators and naturals can, can see with one another outside of just their prejudice against one another. That's why I want to believe in that. And I want to prevent something like that from ever happening. Do you see it happening, Mr. Mercenary? As she gets out of a, a kind and loving smile. But then, Aaron couldn't help but blush before saying, Um, well, actually, I can. People like you that actually bother try to understand one another. Sometimes understanding one another through that of dialogue is possible. But there's also other ways to understand one another. Through combat and battle as well. There are so many ways to try and get to know a person, and yet people forget that. Avalanche will always may remain neutral in this war, but we will step in if things get too damn hairy after all. Simple as that. But currently, I'm with the Alliance, mainly that of the Archangel crew. Some of them may drive me crazy, but I'm still loyal to them, and I have a contract to complete after that, and I plan on keeping it to the very end. So if we do meet each other on the battlefield, possibly either tomorrow or in the next couple hours or so, I won't show any mercy, but I will try my best not to kill you. Not out of, not out of pity or anything, but because the people need good people like the rest of you in this world, especially for the plants. If Patrick Zala wins the election, the, the upcoming election after all, within hearing that, but then, soon, Waltfeld couldn't help but narrow his eyes and realize, You're not wrong, kid. There are chances that Zala will win the election, the upcoming election as Supreme Chairman of the Plants. But that is a high chance. That is a, but that is a 50-50 chance. Even so, with then saying, as a soldier and as a proud member of Zaft and a, and a coordinator of the Plants, I don't plan on holding anything back either. As for your life, well, I could either kill you or keep you alive. Who's, who could say? Sometimes the battlefield is quite the predicament, is quite the hectic place. You could say. Within, the two men couldn't help but have that of a look of intimidation, psyching each other up. Within, Aaron saying, this is exactly what I wanted from the very beginning. I wanted you to keep your attention on me, always. If you, instead of taking, instead of Kira, who basically will, tr who will go in for the kill once his seed mode activates, even though he didn't want to, I, I have no, I have no res I have no reservations. If I use the strife, I'll have more control over my mobile suit. I'll make sure that I don't kill you and Aisha. As I said, in the future. The world needs Andrew Waltfeld. The world needs the Desert Tiger, not as a not as that of a not just as that of a captain of a battleship, but also as a pilot as well. And if I recall from that of the light, from that of the well short light novels, especially during the Astray series, Aisha was one hell of a pilot too, even though the the, the official anime in manga doesn't really show it. I want to see what the woman is truly capable of. With then, soon, well, as the tension in the air gets pretty palpable with that of the young man and the veteran commander, look at each other with determination. With then, Kigali saying, are the two of you going to fight here, here and now? With then, soon, Walfeld saying, nope, you all are free to leave. I'll get you a jeep and so you can head, head back to the city after all. I'll tell DaCosta to send you back to where you guys last were at. As honestly, I, if we do fight, I don't plan on holding anything back. But then Kira's saying, even after knowing us, even after knowing everything that we don't want to fight, or even knowing the truth on why Ace is being, a, why Ace is involved in this war with Avalanche, you still want to fight? You still want to continue within Aaron speak up saying, Kira, he is a soldier. He is a, he is a proud soldier of, of the plants, of Zaft. 
He is a, he's even a commander of his own company. I would even say the same thing for that of Miss Izuyoi as well. You're going to fight as well. But then she's saying, correct. I am the leader. I am currently at the command of Gorelia Fortress after all. And that's, that's in charge of keeping the borders between that of the, that of the Northern African territories and that of the European territories of the Eurasian Federation after all. And taking on that of the legged ship or the Archangel, for, for example, is what's important as well. I'll, personally, I, don't, I do not wish to fight any of you, but as, a, but as that of a commander, who, whose duties is to that of the military force that she that is that she decided to serve i got no i have to and within kira was about to say something before raising her hand saying and if you tell me that i could just let you go and let you buy that's not that's not how this worked kid you can't just i cannot just let you go let you and your crew go you pose a threat to that of the to that of the zap forces to the plants even if you don't know it, you all are dangerous to us, to the people of the plants and to the and to coordinators as well. So my duties as that of a soldier and a commander of my own company comes first too. As for my ideas and my dreams and wants, they come second after all. With then hearing this from the mature, from that of the lightish blue haired young woman, with then, Kira couldn't help but clench his fist, saying, but even so, but then soon, Aaron couldn't help but sigh at Kira's stubbornness, but then saying, so, we better get going? Saying, yeah, I'll call Takasta. Uh, he's already prepared that of a Jeep for you guys. So again, I look forward to facing you guys. But then, after saying that, Felicia goes to the door and opens it. But then Kigali saying, but what about the dress? As Kigali is quite embarrassed having to walk out of this within, Aisha saying, keep it. See it as a gift from me to you. To me, a girl like you that hides that beauty away with the clothes you wear, it's quite a shame after all. Hearing that compliment, it couldn't help but make Kigali even more embarrassed than she already was. With that, both Kira, Aaron, and Kigali all walk out. Shiro walking beside them saying, I'll lead you all out. It's only natural. Melanie, Felicia, head back to Gorelia Fortress, after all. With then, soon, both Felicia and Melanie nod as then they begin to leave the manor. With then, soon, Fel as they begin walking, is, however, Aaron is right beside that of Shiro. With then, Shiro saying, you got something to say? I could tell it right on your face. With then saying, <laughs> that easy, huh? Well, you see, just wanted to know how a half coordinator and half natural such as yourself is even able to rank up this high, even though I know that there are people, there are naturals living on that of the, on the plants after all. It's the older generation of humans who helped out the plants. And I know that they are basically only children in the children of that of natural parents though, with then hearing this, wondering the conversation, both Kira and Kigali keep, an, keep both ears open, but then Shiro couldn't help but smile saying, won't lie, it was hard. And to be honest, I won't lie, I'm not a big fan of war and violence after, to be honest. With then hearing this, Kira couldn't help but be caught off guard before then, Aaron can help but say, so why? With then saying, it's pretty simple, really. All I want to do is help people. All I want to do is bridge the gap between that of coordinators and naturals. I want us to remember that our genes don't make us human because we already are human. We're, we're still living beings. Being born from the union of a natural, natural mother and a coordinator father shows that there's proof that the hu that the hu that people will remember that we're still all human deep down. That's why as a command, and the best way to get that through is become that of a commander within Zeft. I rise up high into the ranks, going from ranks from ensign to lieutenant to now a commander. And then I possibly will become a captain soon after. I wanna make sure if I become higher in the ranks, 
I'll be able to make my ideas of wanting to create that of a world filled with heat to make sure that naturals and coordinators can exist with one another. But during not only that, there's also many people like me here on Earth as well, half breeds such as myself, who either lost their parents during this war or are unable to leave the planet because of the war going on. So I want to at least give them a chance. So I want to end this war as soon as possible through that of peaceful negotiations as well. To come to the realization that everything is, has gone this far because we need to put our differences aside. With that, Aaron couldn't help but say, I couldn't help but 100% agree. So again, if we do fight each other out there, no hard feelings. But then she's saying, none taken. With that, both Kigali and Kira couldn't help but think that maybe their narrow-minded point of view on how the world works is starting to shift even more. With then, arriving outside and to the jeep on where Takasta is saying, please, come right this way. I'll be taking you back on where you last were at during in the city. With then, soon, Kira and Kigali were nervous as Aaron saying, thank you, sir. With, as he gets in the front, gets into that of the passenger side, but then saying, Bell, you two just standing there, get in. With then, soon, after, after saying that, the two twins, unaware of each other, basically get in inside as well. As they soon leave the facility, with then, p passing by them, being that of Isaac and Dirka. However, Isaac's too busy driving to basically notice Aaron on the passenger side of the Jeep. With then, soon, the Dirka saying, I still can't believe that you basically went over all of their battle strategy and past battles. You really do want to be out on the front line saying, the duel's been repaired. They used that of a, 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 shroud, a shroud assault pack to repair the duel. With then saying, yeah, I heard about that. So, and, you, and you're really wanting to test it out saying, that and I want another shot at the mercenary. I want to take, I want to prove that I'm better than him. Not because I, not because a natural, a natural like him could defeat me, but because within remembering his words saying, you're no, you're no different from blue cosmos. And I'm nothing like those radicalist bastards. I'll prove it. I refuse to basically take innocent lives. I'll learn from my mistakes after all. With then, Soon, Dirka can help but sighs at his, at his comrade and friend, saying, whatever folks the boat, what? any rate, let's just get this over with. With soon, seeing that of Shiro, as then, is, is it saying, Commander Izayoi? With then, she's saying, oh, you two. With then, the two saluting to her, as soon, she's saying, I've went over all of your combat data. I'm willing to basically take on that of drills to work with you all. With then saying, oh, really? Hmm. Well, I guess that, I guess it's easier. I guess that's a good thing for at least now, after all. With then, the cop, Dirka saying, wait, what do you mean? With then, she get up and say, in the next couple of hours, I want you all back at the Corellia Fortress. Get your mobile suits ready. We're going to get ready for battle against that of the Archangel. With then hearing that, all the two members of the Lacroix crew couldn't help but get excited. R arriving back at the city with DaCosta basically dropping them off like he said they would. With then heading back to the rendezvous area, seeing that of Nataral, Kisika, and Guy. With then Nataral saying, the hell? Where, the th where were you three? Specifically said that we had that of a time to arrive back at in rendezvous with one another. With then, soon, both Kigali and Kira was about to say something before then, Aaron saying, that's beside the point. At Lu Lieutenant, uh, K Sir Kisika and, Ga and Mr. Morikumo, we got some words, to we got something to say to you guys and to the captain and the and to that of so and to that of Mr. Bashman as well to the and what's possibly going to happen in the next couple of hours before we leave with then 
hearing the words from that of the tan, the tan skin, blonde haired young man, with then heading back to the Archangel with ads of the leaders of the Desert Dawn and the Archangel crew listening to what Aaron has to say as he tells him about what the white, what that of the Desert Tiger and the White Fox plan on doing as they prepare to leave the leave the Northern Territories. With Narumi saying, wait, so you really believe that they're going to do this thing? I exactly know what they're going to do this. They probably knew about us getting a supply run after all and possibly wanted to wait until we got our supplies to take us down, make us uncom make us that of confident that we can basically move through. And Bashman saying, that does seem like a tactic that the Desert Tiger would do. The White Fox would have more have, well, taken on, would have taken it more of a abrupt approach, taking us on, basically focus on that of a, of a blockade to keep us entrapped, not taking us out, but basically daring us to pa try and pass us through her. So it's, with then, Moo can help but scratch his head and cross his arms saying, so this is most likely an operation done by the, done by that of Walt Felt and his company. Guess we got our, guess we have our work cut out for us. If, especially if we're taking on that of the White Fangs too. With then, Nadaro saying, Captain, with then, Narumi saying, we need to prepare with then, Looking at that, of Sahi within saying, Commander Bashman, are your men from the Desert Dawn ready? Within saying, we well, have always been ready. I'll prepare, I'll get things ready. I'll prepare things. We'll need, we also need to prepare for a strategy and tactics. Within the room saying, exactly. While we're preparing, let's prepare, let's get ready for what we need to do once it ha once it, everything begins. With that, Everybody begins to leave. Within, Aaron was about to head to that of the hangar. Before, he soon noticed Kira. Within, saying, Oh boy, figures as much. God, so many revelations. And this kid is basically moping around like some goddamn... Like some goddamn emo protagonist. Seriously, this guy is no Kiro Yu is no Kiro Yui or early... Or season one Setsuna. With then taking out of a deep breath before saying, Yo, Kira, the hell are you just sitting there for? We need to get ready. Saying, How can you say that? Saying, Oh, God. <sighs> get ready. See, what do you mean? We're going to be fighting people we just met. Good people. And I would have been okay with we were just fighting people we didn't know, but Mr. Walfelt, Miss Aisha, and even that of Miss. And even that of Miss e Izuyoi. They're good people. Why do we have to continue fighting them? They say that they want to change things for the better and do good. And do good. So why? But then soon, Aaron had basically the just wanting to just deck him right in the face and snap him out of it. But taking a deep breath and realizing that that's probably not the best thing to do, even though he's stubborn as hell. At least he can try to reason with that of the mo with Jesus Yamato after all. With then saying, because like they said, they're soldiers, commanders, leaders of their companies. Their duties is to that of Zaf and the plants come first. With then saying, but even so, you what you and not only that, Avalanche's main duty is to stop this war. We're preventing that of genocide. Saying, and how do you know that they're going to, that both sides are going to commit genocide on one another? With then, Aaron saying, because I freaking know. You are, do you have any idea on what jealousy and envy can do to people? What fear and hatred can do to people? With then, soon caught off guard by the yelling. With then, Aaron not even caring if they have any audience saying, Kira. This war all began because of one stupid thing. One stupid accident. This godforsaken, pointless damn war all started because of, because of George Glenn. With then, and soon hearing Matt saying, George Glenn, you mean the first coordinator saying? Yeah, the first coordinator. The man was considered to be literally perfect all in every aspect. You know, at first he didn't even cause it. 
You know, at first he was just any, he was just every any ordinary man, no different from a natural or different from a coordinator as I see though. But when he came from, but when he was in Ju, when he was all the way in Jupiter and came back from Jupiter though, that he changed, that he developed. His mind was, his mind reaction, body and skills were all different from a normal human beings. And that's what he called himself a coordinator. And because he became become something so more gifted than any other normal people, and even brought up the fact about coordinators, you, you know what happened? Somebody basically shot him and killed him, all because they were angry that they weren't born a coordinator. With then hearing this from Aaron, as Kira was never big on history, but no but knowing the real reason why, saying how Avalanche studies everything about the past so we can basically move on from the to the future. This war began because people feared coordinators. It also didn't help that George Elster was born to be was basically was was a coordinator naturally. He wasn't genetically altered coordinators like everybody else, such as you. Hearing that even caught Kira off more guard as Aaron internally think, honestly, I think jo Honestly, I think George Glenn was never really a coordinator. If anything, the guy seemed more close to that of a new type, to be fair. The Cosmic Era's version of a new type, just like in the original Universal series of, Gund of the Gundam series. There's always, new types were always considered to be gifted at many other things. Sure, they, they also became a lot more emotional, but they were even able to understand people a lot more understand their foes, their reasoning, why they do that, why they do what they do. Even though it comes in conflict with that of the person's ideas, they are still able to stand tall. And now that I think about it, George Glenn possibly was getting closer and closer to the abilities of a new type. His body may have been altered during his travel from Jupiter back to Earth because he, because his body, body basically altered was naturally altering himself to be that of a co coordinator or a new type. He didn't gain everything of a new type being able to read and understand people's emotions and have a connection with that of technology as well. But if, but if he stayed alive even longer and before he was assassinated, he possibly could have. And, that, and because he never, he never fully understood the new type abilities, it's possible that... Now people only only think that new types are basically people whose ge whose genes have only been altered at birth, not being not naturally being born a coordinator. Ah, damn it all! But then, say, the reason this war is all because of fear and jealousy. Don't forget that it was the alliance that basically started this shit, Kira. They had basically done nothing to stop Blue Cosmos. And you've seen what Blue Cosmos is willing to do just to kill one one coordinator. With then remembering back at the t back in the town, back on how on that of court about the black Blue Cosmos members that basically took out that tried to kill that of Aunt Andrew Walfelt. With then soon saying, and why? Then if this is all the case, then why do people still fight? With then saying because. People are too blinded by their own ideas and what and their own wants. Blinded by their fear and hatred and vengeance. I told you, Kira, the chances of, of, of this war ending peacefully is growing slimmer and slimmer by the day. Sooner or later, the Alliance and the and the and Zaf will basically look at no other option and begin to try and kill one another by obliterating one side or the other. After that, Kira couldn't help but get annoyed, thinking that all of this is all because he wanted to pr protect his friends. All he wanted was just to keep them safe. All he wanted was Flay's attention. Now he's been dragged into a war that's so convoluted and complicated that he doesn't know what he wants anymore. And it's all because of one man same very man that's trying to tell him to continue fighting, even if he, even though he keeps telling him that certain fight that maybe continue this fighting is pointless. With then saying, 
you may be thinking that you're, why you're fighting is completely and utterly pointless. As much as I hate the fact that you basically hide behind the fact that you're trying to protect your friends on why you became a mo continue piloting the strike, at least make that be your only conviction, your only reason for continue fighting. Until that's done, once we hit the Josh A, you can discharge, you can basically discharge yourself and go back to orb if you want. But I will tell you this, Kira Yamato, find your own path for fighting. Don't fight for anybody else. Fight for yourself. Fight for what you believe in. After saying his piece, within, soon, Kira walking to the hangar as he's about to enter within saying, you said back in, back in the town, back in the city, you shot, when you were holding that gun, you were shaking within soon. Stopping in place, Aaron didn't turn back saying, you've killed so many people and you kept so many people alive. Why shake, why shake your hands? Why have that of fear, have that of terror and fear now? You're a mercenary, right? Shouldn't killing people be so easy for you? With then saying, huh, you would think that, but that was my first time shooting a person with a gun. And I'm not talking about a mobile suit gun. I'm talking about in person, using a handgun or a rifle or a machine gun or assault rifle. I'll tell you this, Kira. I'll be completely honest with you. I hate killing people. But I do it because it needs to be done. People need to know the truth that war isn't as fair as people think it is. War is never fair. And if they're and if the, and the idiots who are in charge of this, who are in charge of both factions, both Zaf and the Alliance, want to continue playing with people's lives, and if those people want to continue fight following them and their stupid ideals, then they're going to see the then they're going to. Ch See what chips may fall. Some may live and some may die. Simple as that. It all comes with luck. And I'll tell you this, I'm not ashamed in killing people. I'm ashamed of having to do it. And if you think that, th that I'm being too rough on myself or if I'm being too, if I'm being too, and I'm trying to play God, no, I'm not. All I am is just a person who doesn't want to see any more bloodshed than there already has to be. Think it's about time you get with the program, Kira Yamato. With that, he finally enters in the hangar with the doors closing back. Within soon, Kira couldn't help but think, I'm not like you. I've never been like you. Even though the two of us seem similar, you and I are totally different from one another. You put so much on your shoulders and yet it almost seems like you don't want anything to do with it. So why? Why push yourself? Why go through it so much? For people you don't know, they just don't get it. With then Kira contemplating everything about everything that he's heard, he's talked about, and even wondering on who Aaron truly is. And that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Love to read them. So yeah, honestly, I did say I was trying to make this a lot more shorter. However, I wanted to basically show some parts as well. With that of Natural changing, with that of Mu and Narumi also trying to be more trying to be more trusting towards that of Aaron. Flay inside getting over their drama early instead of basically drawing it out for literal fucking chapters on. And the last one being between that of Aaron and Kira as their ideas basically clash with one another. And you may be wondering why am I making Kira so indecisive? Let's bring up the fact that Kira has always been an indecisive son of a bitch in the early half of Seed. They always make us feel bad for the guy, always saying that he doesn't want to fight, he doesn't want to kill, he does all of this for his friends. He's pushing himself so far to protect somebody that he loves and yet they don't love him back and all that. That he doesn't want to kill and everything. Newsflash, this brat has always killed. It's so dim and then when he gets the freedom, he acts like so high and mighty by only destroying per people's main cameras or disarming them. 
as he get up on his goddamn soapbox about that he refuses to kill anyone else anymore. He may be one of the best Gundam pilots, but as a, but as a protagonist, he sucks. That's why I'm trying to continue the conflict between these two, not because of Flay anymore, but because of their ideologies. Aaron has already seen the end of Seed because he's watched the anime and, all, and also see that of Seed Destiny as well, alongside that in the Astray series too. So he knows on how shit basically goes after all. When he's witnessing everything and basically feeling everything that everybody else feels, he's, he's, con he's constantly getting annoyed at the fact that everybody, that everybody basically wants to feel bad for Kira when they shouldn't. And that's where Eren comes in. He's basically trying to tell Kira to grow up instead of him growing the same complex that he would get all the way to fucking destiny where his, his and Lax's ideas are better than everybody else. It sickens me. However, there are chances that this may backfire though. As you know, may now say, Sometimes forcing things could always re can always make things even worse, as they may say. So yeah. Any rate, if you guys like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification. Keep to date my videos when I upload on the channel. Also, please check out my Discord, my gaming channel, my main channel, my my other channel, my Patreon, and my Cash App. All link in the description below. So with all that said, this is Yamuki signing out. Later guys and take care.